migration days two to five. During the first two days, the NA larva will migrate from your skin via your bloodstream to your lungs. They spend days two to five in your lungs where they come into contact with everything that you breathe in, like pollen, dust, smoke. At this point, you might experience a cough, but you want to be careful not to actually spit anything up because you could end up losing your larva. Typical side effects experienced during this time are the skin reaction covered in the last video, nausea, sneezing, gas, cramping, diarrhea, and fatigue. You should also be prepared for the symptoms of the illness that you're treating to begin flaring temporarily during this time. And another interesting phenomenon that some people experience is that old injuries that have long healed will start hurting again. Comments from others have been, the finger I broke last year is killing me. My TMJ is flaring. My knee is all screwy, high school thing. Another finger someone hit with a symbol in high school hurts, and the wrist I broke 28 freaking years ago is acting up. My first inoculation, 5NA, I ended up with weird symptoms I hadn't experienced in years. Full-blown reactions. I had brain zaps briefly this morning, 32 days into inoculation with 3NA. These are a common side effect of SSRI, antidepressant withdrawal, that I used to get when I lowered my dose or forgot to take a pill that day. It's a very distinct feeling. I've been off SSRIs for about a decade. The first and second time I dosed with NA, I got scared by some disease symptoms I hadn't seen for maybe 10 years. They dissipated after 12 weeks. Now, on my third dose, I'm not having symptoms from 10 years ago, but I'm having symptoms I used to have as a child from 25 to 30 years ago. Then, this morning, I started having back spasms. Real brief, intense spasms that hunch me over, knock my breath out, and then are gone. I've had these super randomly in the past, like three spasms a year, but I just had four within 20 minutes this morning. One week after my second inoculation of 5NA, I'm having a return of old pain symptoms. Yesterday, my leg was killing me. I had problems walking. Then I remembered, oh yeah, I fell when walking the dog back in March and bruised the bone. Still have a small bump. Today my jaw is aching. Oh no, I must have cracked another molar. But no, in the same spot. It's just an old symptom. This worm journey is so interesting. I've been on HT for two plus years, so maybe nine doses of NA. This last time, I felt a heavy aching soreness all up and down my right arm and a pain near my elbow. I became seriously alarmed that I might be developing some symptoms of MS or Parkinson's or something because it felt like a strain to lift my arm. Then I remembered breaking my arm at age nine after a fall from a fast moving horse. So strange and mysterious and magical to revisit these cellular body memories through the helmet experience, it went away after a couple of days. When I was younger, my left rib cage locked up and breathing, moving hurt really bad. As my pants got a bit better as I grew up, these incidents essentially disappeared. After inoculating with 3NA three weeks ago, I have had several lockups of my left heart area that hurt when I breathe and move but go away in a few minutes, like when I was a kid. Wow, these things are mysterious. Each successive dose, I seem to go through later periods of my illness. I'm at the most recent one, severe and long-lasting reactions to trace gluten. For my personal experience, for my first dose, I noted tummy rumbling, burping, sneezing, gas, stomach pain. On two different days, I had two bowel movements, and before one of them, on one of those days, I had a sudden brief pain in my stomach. I had headaches or existing headaches that then escalated into migraines, wheezing and coughing, which would of course be a symptom of the NA entering my lungs, throat clearing, which is a symptom I get when my UE flares up, this pain in my wrist that I had for most of the previous year that had actually been under control for at least half a year due to an elimination diet that then flared up again. That mental feeling of having a cold, not much appetite, feeling the need to pee a lot even though I didn't really need to, which is something I get from histamine overload, upper abdomen or lower rib pain and gurgling at one point. And I'd also been anxious about a lot of stuff and noted on one day that I suddenly felt a lot calmer. With those two, I had a really 
deep nap on two days and woke up feeling really good. Gassiness, headaches, rectal bleeding and or painful bowel movements, which would have been due to increased inflammation in the lower end of the GI tract. Eye twitching, which is something that I haven't really dealt with since high school. I did feel up to doing a bit of cleaning at one point and I noted on two days that I was feeling really happy and in the middle of the night just started dancing briefly. I also then had an increase in physical fatigue whereas at the same time I was feeling very mentally focused and able to do some writing. This nice sort of sleepy feeling. I remembered a dream. I slept a lot later which is another symptom I get from histamine overload. This hard slightly painful popping in the side of my hand. Bad neck and back ache and short of breath, which again would be from the NA entering my lungs. With my third dose, all I noted was that I had diarrhea on two days. Starting at day five, I was feeling a bit more fatigued and started having headaches. And up to day five, I was feeling a bit down. With my fourth dose, I was having H1 and H2 symptoms. H1 would be like sneezing, sniffling, and H2 would be upset stomach. However, I did note that I had gotten hives when shaving over the past couple months. And at that point, I was able to shave again without hives. Hives. I also drank a 36 year old wine and didn't notice any side effects even though normally I can't even drink a normal wine that's from the same year. A couple days later the H1 and H2 symptoms got a bit more intense. I spent most of the day in bed, was very fatigued, very brain fogged and when I did get up and go out I really felt like I just wanted to sit and lay down which was a feeling I got when my fatigue was at its worst a couple years ago and I felt like I could barely make it home. I had this funny feeling in my right ankle, similar to this feeling I get in my wrist. Gassiness throughout the day. Again, I had a crick in my neck at one point. Even though I was already feeling really out of it, I tried to go into town with some friends and I just wasn't feeling up to it at all. Ended up going home almost as soon as we arrived and spending the rest of the evening in bed. The next day, again, I managed to do some cleaning, but then spend the rest of the evening in bed recovering from it. So it did take a lot out of me. And then with my fifth and most recent dose, I had the same tendonitis feeling. I get my hand in the outer side of my left foot. There were several times where I was suddenly feeling really drowsy. And then there was also times when I was very mentally focused, able to do some video editing, writing, stuff like that. And then there were also times where I spent hours laying in bed before I would get up to eat even though I was really hungry which again is another symptom I get from histamine overload. And there was again one night where I did a lot of cleaning with breaks every now and then but I just kept going back to it and getting a lot done and stayed up really late and was also in a pretty good mood. So you can definitely see that a lot of these symptoms are recurring. There's also a lot of symptoms that I had my first time that sort of diminished with each successive dose. And there's a lot of symptoms that are typical for me that other people haven't experienced. So as usual, a lot of this is very individual and you just have to give it a try and see how it goes for you. If these side effects sound like a bit much to handle, keep in mind that they are dose dependent. So don't forget to check out hookworm dosing and response. All of the information on this video can be found on the wiki pages hookworm timeline under days two to five migration and hookworm side effects under recapitulation of old injuries and illnesses. I wish you all all the best and the mildest experience possible but if you are having a rough go of it rest assured any flare-ups or side effects experienced are temporary and I will see you guys in the next installment.